to today's roundup slash review video of VidCon 2016. As you may or may not know, I went to VidCon this year. It was my first time going. And first of all, let me just say I had an absolute great time. I'm so glad that I went. It was absolutely amazing. And I actually vlogged my entire experience. I did some daily vlogs. So if you haven't seen them yet, I will leave a link uh, for a video playlist in the down bar as well as a card up here so you can go and check it out. But um, today I wanted to do a little roundup video talking more about my experience and some things that I didn't mention in my vlog or just briefly touched on. Because VidCon can be a bit crazy. There's so many things happening at once and you just kind of forget to mention everything in the vlog as you go. So I wanted to do a roundup video and kind of sum it up in one space. So I thought I would do this video today that you're you're watching. Now for those of you who don't know what VidCon actually is, um, it's the biggest YouTube convention. It is hosted in Anaheim, California every year and starting next year they also have two more locations, one in Europe and one in Australia. So if you want to check out any of that I will leave some links in the down bar. I should also mention there's different tickets that you can get. There's a community, creator and industry and then there's also a feature creator um, pass for people who are invited and get to speak on panels and then I believe they also get one or two um, plus one like full access passes for people as well. And I guess those are like the best passes to have because you can do pretty much everything that VidCon has to offer and the other passes are limited in certain things so you can do different activities depending on your pass. I had a creator pass which looks like this. It has my name on it, Hannah Creative. And um, then there's also this little Adobe, Team Adobe batch that's from a scavenger hunt that I didn't actually participate in but I love Adobe. So I wanted to have that batch and what that means is that you can go to the community floor and the creator floor of the convention center and do different activities there such as go to panels and meet people and that is mostly what I did at VidCon. I think I went to 14 panels in total which is quite a lot for three days and I tried to make the most of it and went to as many as I could and I really 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 enjoyed them some more than others. Overall I have to say that I enjoyed the creator panels more than I enjoyed the community panels. That might be because the creator ones are obviously more targeted it uh, towards creators so they have content about making videos and just things that creators are more interested in as opposed to the community panels which community usually means that it's people who watch YouTube and don't actually make the videos so they have more like fan targeted things and topics there and like Q and A's and stuff. Yeah I went to a couple of community panels and I have to say overall I enjoy the vibe of the creator ones more because it is less of a fan creator experience which I guess makes sense if there's more viewers the overall vibe is gonna be a bit different and what I mean by that is that towards the end of the panels they usually open it up for questions uh, from the audience and at the community panels a lot of people ask questions that don't necessarily contribute to the content of the panel but are more like questions for their favorite youtubers so they would ask about like their favorite food their favorite color what do you think about bagged milk or what do you call a small tomato and stuff like that so for most of the people at the panel it wasn't really beneficial to hear the answers of the questions it's not really contributing to the panel itself and it's very unfortunate when other people don't get to ask their questions because I'm sure there were people who had like amazing questions and they didn't really get to ask them. One example I had, I briefly mentioned it in my vlog, was um, a community panel with Hannah Witten, Lucy Moon and Elena Fenda and uh, my friend Hannah and I had some questions that we wanted to ask and then we didn't get to ask our questions so usually after the panel you can go up to the people and talk to them but this year the security was way more strict because of the events surrounding VidCon which I 100% understand. I'm really glad that everyone felt safe and nothing happened Big shout out to the security guards, by the way, for doing an amazing job. But this year you couldn't really do that. So at the end of that panel, we wanted to talk to them. I wanted to talk to Hannah because she mentioned she was coming off the pill and something with the period. So I wanted to recommend the period cup. Anyway, not important. So we went up and kind of started talking to them until security guided us out and then they were guided back into the green room. And this really awkward thing happened where um, I actually screamed, not, not screamed, but like I shouted as we walked out. I was like, Hannah, by the way, try the period cup. It's great. It was a bit awkward, <laughs> not gonna lie. I hope she doesn't remember me as the girl who shouted something about the period cup after her. 
and unfortunately we didn't get to continue our conversation elsewhere because as featured creators they don't really do a lot of the things that you do with a normal creator pass because the featured ones they usually spend a lot of their time backstage with other featured creators and there's definitely a separation between the creators and the featured creators and I think that is very unfortunate for me as someone who's not really interested in the number of subscribers or someone of someone but I'm interested in the people themselves I just want to talk to people and get to know them and have interesting conversations and I don't care if that person has a million subscribers or a hundred thousand or a thousand if that's someone interesting and we get along and I have a great conversation and get to meet a possible new friend that's great, that's all I want. Of course there's people that I would like to talk to who I watch on YouTube as well and like I look up to of course but I personally just want to talk to them and have an interesting conversation. I don't want to just go up to someone and take a selfie. I don't really see the point in that. It's totally fine if you want to do that, like I'm not judging you at all. Just for me I'd rather go up to people who I find interesting and talk to them and it's actually quite hard doing that at VidCon with people who have more subscribers. That's definitely a thing that I think not a lot of people are talking about but as a small creator you definitely notice that you're not really being recognized as a creator a lot of the times even by bigger creators and I don't think they actually intend for it to happen but it does happen. I don't like the idea of being put in a box based on the amount of subscribers I have because that doesn't define me as a person and I don't want to be defined by my number of subscribers as much as I don't want to define other people by their number of subscribers. You can have a million subscribers and be a giant squad head. Just because you have a lot of subscribers doesn't mean you're a nice and cool person. Doesn't mean I want to talk to you. It's a very tough situation because it's really hard to pick out creators who aren't interested in numbers out of people who are interested in numbers like you don't know by looking at someone is that person genuinely interested in me as a person or just my viewership you just can't really tell so it's really hard to change the way the creator creator divide works and it's definitely noticeable at VidCon I really wish it wasn't um, so that's one thing that I actually didn't like all that much, but I also understand that it's just really, really difficult. Now, I don't want to sound rude or ungrateful in any kind of way. I'm so lucky that I could go and I met so many awesome people and I understand that it's very tricky to make it pleasant for everyone and stuff. I understand that it's very difficult. I just think that not a lot of people really talk about it and I think it is important to talk about because I'm sure other small creators have felt the same way at conventions or YouTube events where they're just kind of being looked past or just looked down upon because of their amount of subscribers and it's an issue and I think we should talk about it more. I actually want to do an entire video talking about the creator-creator divide because as much as we don't want it to be there, it's definitely there. It exists. The same thing goes for um, other activities as well like parties for example. There's so much cool stuff to do during the day at VidCon but at night there's not really that much going on so me and my friends usually went to the Hilton hotel bar they only let people from the hotel into the bar this year again because of security issues so we had a few friends who were staying at the Hilton so they could let us in and we could hang out at the bar because otherwise I don't really think there's much to do there's not really a lot of bars around unless you want to uber somewhere and there aren't really any evening events aside from the creator party which happened on a Saturday that was pretty cool and they also had the creator ball but other than that there's not really a lot you can do so you can either just hang out with your group of friends or try and go out in front of the convention center and hang out with people there but I really wish there were more activities you could do as just like a community member or a creator because all of the cool parties, the fun things that people always talk about and vlog about and stuff those are all exclusive to featured creators. I think that's one thing that I actually didn't really think about too much before going to VidCon because I watch a lot of people who are like featured creators or bigger creators who go to VidCon and I see them have all these fun um, events and stuff and do all these fun things but keep in mind if you're not a featured creator you're not really likely to get into any of these parties which again I understand but as someone who just wants to go out and have fun and talk to people and I don't care if some of the people at the party have a million subscribers like I genuinely 
couldn't care less. <laughs> I just want to have a great time and meet people and it would be cool to have more events for other people as well. But enough about the separation and the things that I think could maybe be improved for the next VidCon because like I said VidCon was awesome. I had a blast and I still managed to meet so many amazing people. I have befriended so many people from VidCon that I have actually met up with since and um, one of them is actually gonna come visit me in December and one of my friends from Australia is gonna move to London next year so I can spend more time with her. It's so crazy to think that I didn't even know these people before VidCon and I just met them at the convention. They're so cool, like I'm so glad that I met them and I'm so excited to see them again. And it's all because of YouTube, it's all because of VidCon. It's just so awesome that VidCon is a place where we all come together and talk about something that we all have in common and that we're all really passionate about and just exchange some thoughts and meet each other and talk to each other and it's just so great you're constantly surrounded by people who understand you who get you who motivate you and it's such a wonderful feeling it's really hard to describe if you haven't never like felt like that but especially if you are someone who doesn't have a lot of people in their life that really get the whole YouTube thing. If you go to places like VidCon, you're surrounded by so many people who understand you and it's so incredible. I'm so happy. I can't even wait to go to VidCon again next year. I'm definitely going to the one in Europe. I'm very excited. And I'm trying to go to the one in um, Anaheim as well. I really hope I can make it. I need to save up some money for the flight and for the tickets and also Hopefully that will work out with uni. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say, but I think that was pretty much all that I wanted to say. And I hope it didn't come across the wrong way. I'm so happy that I got to go to VidCon. There are like a few things that could be improved. Obviously nothing is perfect, but I'm still very, very grateful that people take out time of their lives to organize such an event and to come to the event and make it what it is. And I think it's so amazing that this whole platform has brought us together so yeah, I'm really glad VidCon exists and I'm really glad that I went and I want to go again in the future and just experience it all again. That was so cheesy, <laughs> but it's true. I'm actually really excited to see what the VidCon in Europe is like now that I went to the one in Anaheim because I think the one in VidCon is a bit shorter and they probably are gonna have more European creators, so I'm guessing that's gonna be a theme for the panels as well, which I'm really excited about. Um, I actually suggested some panel ideas uh, in the VidCon feedback form, which that's also something that's really cool. VidCon sends out a form they can fill out and suggest creators and ideas for like panels and talks and stuff. Because if there's something that you're really passionate about and you want people to talk about or you yourself want to talk about, then that's definitely a really cool way of giving feedback and you should totally take that opportunity. Yeah, I guess that is all that I have to say for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I didn't ramble on too much about things. So I'm gonna go. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and let me know in the comments below if you have ever been to a VidCon convention or to a YouTube convention or if you're planning on going or if you have anything to contribute to the things that I was talking about in my video and if you're not subscribed yet you can do that as well so you're informed about when I make a new video. I have some really cool travel vlogs coming up from my past travels as well as my moving vlog finally from when I moved into this glorious new space that I'm currently at. I'm so happy by the way. Uh, so yeah if you don't want to miss out on that you should definitely subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! It's just such an undescribable, indescribable, Undes indes words. What are words? You don't know. Clearly, you don't know how to use them.